Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Well, we lost part of the video. Leviticus 4, verse 22. We're talking about the ruler. We've gotten to verse 25. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering. you got to have blood for a sin offering. You can't have water. You can't have church attendance. You can't have good work. This ram, we don't know if he did good or not. And we can't say that the, the ruler has done good because guess what? Verse 22, he's guilty. So if we're pointing to people, they're sinners, they're guilty. In order to be saved, you have to be guilty of a sin, even you don't know you're doing the sin. And you got to bring blood. And we've already discussed, which, which was lost, that the priests, in the beginning of this chapter 4, the priests are sinners. So when you go to a priest, you got a sinner to go into a sinner. And this is a representation of Jesus Christ. The priest shall take the blood of the sin offering. Blood, sin offering. With his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering. And shall pour out his blood, the blood of the goat, at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering. He shall burn all of his fat. There's no fat eaten by Israel. It's forbidden. It goes to God upon the altar as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offering. Again, the peace offerings and the sin offering go together. You cannot have peace without your sin offering, Jesus Christ. If you are guilty and you have not brought your sin offering to God, Jesus Christ, the mediator between God and man, you don't have no peace. Peace offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sins, sins it shall be forgiven. Now, the one that's making atonement for him today is Jesus Christ. His atonement was upon Calvary's cross. Not we don't bring goats no more. We don't bring bullocks. The first part of this chapter, we've been look, br br bringing beef. Now it's goat. But you've got to have the Lamb of God today that take away the sin of the world. You've got to be guilty of your sins. Is anyone the common people? That's me. I'm a common person. So we're talking about me. Talking about you. Sin through ignorance. There is a sin that you can do that you do not know you're doing yet. And further Bible reading, further Bible study, sitting under a proper Bible-believing preacher will get those sins out in your life for you got to come to God guilty. Now, if you get a modern Bible, you change it, you whitewash it, you get it with water, you get it with uh, joining the church, you get it because you're a good person, you're not saved. So... Sing through ignorance while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and be, there's that word, guilty. You can never be pardoned if you're not guilty. The definition of pardon must include guilt. There's no other way around it. Or if he sin which he has sinned come to his knowledge. Then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, like the ruler, a female 
without blemish. Well, the ruler was supposed to bring a male. Well, now we got a female. I guess females can get saved too. You know, there are some religions out there where the females, you know, you're just, you're pathetic. And when you die, you're going to be even worse treated off as you are on earth under the religion. But here's a female without blemish for his sin, which he has sinned. So you got to confess your sin. And when you walk up to the tabernacle of the congregation before all the people and you're standing in line and it's your turn, you are telling those priests that are doing the work, you are telling the people that are behind you, I'm a sinner. Here's my offering. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel that you have believed. Do not be ashamed to say to people, I'm a sinner and Christ has washed me from my sins. I am unspotted by God, but there's times in my life I need a foot washing because I, I, I walk in this miserable, sin-cursed world and this flesh does overcome every once in a while. And I'm guilty. If he confesses sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. He shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering. You kill the sin offering yourself, Isaiah 53. Who killed Jesus? You and your sins. Read Isaiah 50. Your iniquities, your sins have been laid upon him. On that cross, Jesus prayed before in the garden, that sin cup, Lord God, I really don't want to take that sin cup, but I will take that sin cup at your will. And at that moment, Jesus became sin, every, all sin. The Lamb of God was take away the sin of the world. what we're talking about we're looking at jesus upon the cross dying and shall slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering jesus christ had to die for you to be saved you had to slay the, the, the animal you had to slay god's son your mother can't save you your brother can't save you your preacher can't save you. Your priest can't save you. you got to walk up guilty. And the priest shall take the blood thereof with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering. And shall pour all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. Now this one, they don't go into the holy place. Like with the priest and the, and the congregation. That's absent from the common person. Your sins are dealt with there at the brazen altar at hell. You come to Calvary, Lord God, Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. I am a sinner. I know I've sinned. I'm guilty of sin. Will you cleanse me and wash me according to the word of God? Amen. You get saved. You walk up to the, the brazen labor and you have had that spiritual uh, operation between your flesh and and your soul called the spiritual circumcision, that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp and two-edged sword, and now that you've been separated from that flesh, that flesh may sin, you are no longer a sinner, you are a child of God, now you walk into the holy of holies, you walk through the holy place, and you dwell there. And then you get that, that foot cleansing that Jesus told them, say, listen, I don't need to clean you all over, Peter. I just got to clean you from that filthy walk you do. But you are clean. And he shall take away all the fat thereof. No fat among the Jews thee. As the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace offering. Putting the two together again. Peace offering by the sin offering. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor. On, did you see that before? You know what happens when you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior? God says, oh, that is so sweet. That is so sweet. I don't want to check something here. I got a note here. Hold on. I don't know why I got this note here. All right. Let me try it like this. Hold on. All right. A little note here. I just want to make sure before I say anything. Where was it? Forgive me. Let me check this note here. 
No, oh, I don't know why I got that note there. But it says a sweet savor. The Bible records Isaiah 53. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. And here we live, we read in Leviticus, it's sweet unto the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, who is God. There is nothing sweeter to God than when someone says, Lord God, Jesus, save my soul. I am guilty. I am. However they pray the right prayer at the right place, the right way with their heart, God says, that's sweet. And the angels, the Bible records in the book of Luke, they gather up and they rejoice. A man may run, run across the goal line in a football game. And, uh, we baptized 5,000 people. Uh, oh, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I don't want him to go to hell. Hey, everyone, hallelujah. The lamb is praised. The lamb is saved. God is smiling. A name is getting, look at, check it out. The book is open. The name's getting written in that book right now. That's a sweet savor unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for him. Jesus Christ, our priest. Jesus Christ, our high priest, according to the uh, Hebrews. And it shall be forgiven him. 1 John 1, 1 9. Write that right there. 1 John 1 9. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins through Jesus Christ. I'm a common person. No, I'm not. Because I've been to Calvary. I've been saved. I am now a child of God. No Jew could say that. Uh-oh. Let's see. Let's read on. Ready? Ready? If he bring a L-A-M-B for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish. Now check out Isaiah 53. And then uh, in Acts chapter 7, one place says a female. And another place it says a male. About the bleeding of the sheep. And he shall bring a female without blemish. No, no troubles, no problems with that. He shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering. Again, I already said that. They, they laid their hand upon Jesus before the Sanhedrin. But they didn't lay their hand upon Jesus. He was covered with a shroud when they punched him. The head of the sin offering is to slay it for a sin offering in the place where they killed the burnt offering at that brazen altar. That's, uh, Isaiah 53, 7. Isaiah 53, 7. And then when Stephen says it in Acts chapter 7, he says his. And that's, what, and that's again, I got the notes there, not here. Male or females can be saved. You got to bring the Lamb of God. The Lamb. Which is the Son of God. He shall take away all the fat thereof. I don't think Jesus had any fat. That guy walked from north, south, up and down mountains. As the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offering. There's that peace offering again. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. According to the orphans made by fire of the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he has committed. And it shall be forgiven him. Again, with that beef, with that bullet, he's burnt. He is taken outside the camp. Isaiah, uh, Hebrews 13, verses 10 through 13. Jesus Christ died without the camp. But for a common person like me, guilty. So the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you're dealing with someone, you've got to have the word of God. And I will go so far as say you've got to have the right word of God. I know some people say you can have a modern Bible, but I'm not going to go that far. Sorry, but I'm not. You got to get with them the word of God. You got to show them Jesus Christ. You got to show them Jesus Christ as God offering himself on that cross. That the penalty, if you don't, you will die in your sins and you will go to hell. And the next thing, that person's going to get saved. He's got to have the blood. He's got to have the lamb. Blood, lamb, guilt, sin. You see what's in this chapter for the common person? And don't worry, you know, 
Your president ain't going to save you. Verse 22, there's the ruler. He's a sinner. Being an American, that's not going to save you. Verse 13, the whole congregation. I know it says Israel, but some people think because you're American, God's going to be pleased with you. Oh, I'll just go to my priest. Really? Let's try chapter 4, verse 3. If the priest is annoyed, do sin. And from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, there's only one person in this book that has never, ever sinned, Jesus Christ. He's the offering of God today. And if we were under the law, as Paul has dealt with some churches that were trying to get under the law back then, which we can't today, I cannot get a lamb or I cannot get a, what was the word, the other one? A goat. Okay. If I can go buy a goat or if I can go get a lamb, because I'm a sinner, I am, and march myself over Jerusalem, I got a problem. I got a big problem. Because if I go to Jerusalem with that lamb or that goat, and I go where I'm supposed to go in Jerusalem, I walk up to the gates of that place in Jerusalem, I walk up to the dumb of the rock. That's not God approved. I was not my God. I cannot offer the blood. I cannot lay my hands on that goat way God has prescribed, verses 27 to verse 35, goat or lamb. I cannot do that at the, at the door or the veil of the tabernacle or the temple because it's not there. It was destroyed in 70 AD. And God's sure not going to honor Allah's temple. That's not the right one. And God has already prescribed to us by the man that's spoken about in Isaiah chapter 40. I will send my messenger before you. John the Baptist was the messenger before Jesus Christ. He said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You didn't get that? Same chapter, a few verses later. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Haven't got that right? John chapter 3, verse 36. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall see the wrath of God abiding upon him. The wrath of God is hell, which pictures that brazen altar, which where Jesus went and deposited our sins. If anybody else teaches anything besides that, they're wrong. And if you believe anything else but that by any preacher, by any preacher, by anybody who's in the ministry is not preaching blood, and not preaching guilt, not preaching sin, not preaching Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and you said whatever you have to do and do whatever you have to do for the, whatever you have to do for all that, you're going to die and go to hell in your sins. And you tell that leader, you tell that person, I said so, and I'll tell them the Bible says so, not me. I don't care what I say. It's what the Bible says. So go up to your, your priest. Go up to your Catholic friend and read to him. Hey, I just let's sit down and talk Leviticus chapter 4 first. Okay? Let's talk Leviticus chapter 4. And you got the verse 3. He's already... I got to go. There's only one priest. He's a high priest. Hebrews. All over Hebrews. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. 